theCUBE's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies. Creating technologies that drive human progress. Good morning from Barcelona, everyone. It's theCUBE live at MWC 23, day three of our four days of coverage. Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson. Dave, we have had some great conversations. Can't believe it's day three already. Anything sticking out at you from a thematic perspective that really caught your eye the last couple days? I guess I go back to kind of our experience with sort of the generalized world of information technology and a lot of the parallels between what's been happening in other parts of the economy and what's happening in the telecom space now. So it helps me understand some of the, the complexity when I tie it back to things that I'm, uh, that I'm aware of. A lot of complexity, but a, a big ecosystem that's growing. We're going to be talking more about the ecosystem next and what they're doing to really enable customers, CSPs, to deliver services. We've got two guests here. Tammy Wyman joins us, the global head of Partners Telco at AWS, and Kurt Schabach, CTO of Federated Wireless. Welcome to theCUBE, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Great Thanks to have you us. here, day yeah. three. Lots of announcements, lots of news at MWC, but Tammy, there's been a lot of announcements from partners with AWS this week. Talk to us a little bit more about, first of all, the partner program, and then let's unpack some of those announcements. One of them is with Federated Wireless. Sure. Yeah, so AWS created the partner program 10 years ago when they really started to understand the value of bringing together the ecosystem. So, you know, I think we're starting to see how this is becoming a reality. So now we, uh, 100,000 partners later, um, 150 countries, 70% of those partners are outside of the U.S., so truly the global nature. And partners being uh, ISVs, GSIs, and then in the telco space, we're actually looking at how we help CSVs become partners of AWS and bring new revenue streams. So that's how we uh, start having the discussions around federated wireless. Talk a little bit about federated wireless, Kirk. Give the audience an overview of what you guys are doing and then maybe give us some commentary on the partnership. Sure, so we're a shared spectrum and private wireless company. We actually started working with AWS about five years ago to um, take this model that we developed to perfect the use of shared spectrum to enable enterprise communications and bring the power of 5G to the enterprise um, to, to bring it to all of the AWS customers and partners. Um, so through that now, through we're one of the partner network um, participants. Um, we're working very closely with the AWS team on bringing this you know, really unique form of connectivity to all sorts of different enterprise use cases from you know, solving uh, manufacturing and warehouse logistics issues to providing connectivity to mines, um, enhancing the experience for students on a university campus. So it's a really exciting partnership. Everything that we deliver on an end-to-end -end basis from design, deployment, to bringing the infrastructure on-prem all runs on AWS. So, a lot of the conversations that we've had sort of start with this concept of the radio access network and frankly, in at least the public domain, cellular sites. And so all of a sudden it's sort of grounded in this physical reality of these towers with, with these boxes of equipment on the tower, at the base of the tower, connected to other things. How does AWS and Federated Wireless, how, how do, where, where do you fit in that model in terms of equipment at the base of a tower versus what? Having that be off-premises in some way or another? Kind of give us, give us more of a flavor for the kind of physical reality of, of, of what you guys are doing. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll start, yeah, yeah, but I'll, I'll hand it over to the real expert. But from an AWS perspective, what we're finding is really, um, uh, I don't know if it's even a convergence or kind of a delayering of the network. So customers are, they don't care if they're on Wi-Fi, if they're on public spectrum, if they're on private spectrum. Uh, what they want are networks that are able to talk to each other and to provide the right connectivity at the right time and with the right pricing model. So by moving to the cloud, that allows us that flexibility to be able to offer the quality of service and to be able to bring in a larger ecosystem of partners as the networks are almost disaggregated. So does the AWS strategy focus solely on things that are happening in, say, AWS locations or AWS data centers? Or is AWS also getting into the arena of um, what I would refer to as an outpost 
in, in AWS parlance, where, where physical equipment that's running a stack might actually also be located physically where the communications towers are. What, was, what does that mix look like in terms of your strategy? Yeah, certainly, um, as customers are looking at hybrid cloud environments, uh, we started looking at how we can use Outpost as part of the network. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've got some great uh, use cases where we're taking Outpost into the edge of operators' networks and really, you know, starting to have radio in, in the cloud. Um, we've launched uh, with Dish uh, earlier, uh, and now we're starting to see some other announcements that we've made with Nokia about having RAN in the cloud as well. So using Outpost, um, that's one of our key strategies. It creates, again, a lot of flexibility uh, for the, uh, the uh, hybrid cloud environment and uh, brings a lot of that compute power to the edge of the network. Let's talk about some of the announcements, Tammy. I was reading that AWS is expanding its, its telecom and 5G, private 5G network support. You've also unveiled the AWS Telco Network Builder service. Talk about that, who that's targeted for, what does an operator do with AWS on this, and maybe you guys can talk about that together. Sure, uh, do, would you like to start? I can, I, I can talk, okay, all right. Uh, so from the uh, Network Builder, this was aimed, uh, it's aimed at the, I, I would say the persona that it's aimed at would be the uh, network engineer within the CSPs. And um, there was a, a, a bit of a, a difficulty when you want to design a telco network on AWS versus the way that the network engineers would traditionally design. Um, so I, I'm going to call them protocols, but you know, I can imagine saying, I really want to build this on the cloud, but they're making me move away from my typical way that I design a network and move it into a cloud world. So um, what we did was really kind of create this template saying, you know, you can, you can build the network as you always do, and we're going to put the magic behind it to translate it into a cloud world. So it's just really facilitating and taking some of the friction out of the building of the network. What was the catalyst for that? I think DISH and Swisscom you've been working with, but talk about the catalyst for doing that and how it's facilitating change, because part of that's change management with how network engineers actually function and how they work. Absolutely, yeah. And we're looking, you know, we listen to customers and we're trying to understand what are those friction points, what would make it easier, and that was one that we heard consistently. So we you know, wanted to apply a bit of uh, you know, our experience and the way that we're able to use data, translate that using code, so that you're building a, a network in your traditional way, and then it, it kind of spits out what's the formula to build the network in, uh, in the cloud. Got it. Kurt, talk about, yeah, I saw that there was just an announcement that Federated Wireless made. JBG Smith, talk to us more about that. What will Federated help them to create and how, is, how are y'all working together? Sure, so JBG Smith is the exclusive redeveloper of an area just on the other side of the Potomac from Washington DC called National Landing. And it's about half the size of Manhattan. So it's an enormous area that's getting redeveloped it's the home of Amazon's um, new HQ2 location. And JBG Smith is investing in, in addition to the commercial real estate, um, digital place making, a place where people live, work, play, and connect. And part of that is bringing an enhanced level of connectivity to people's homes, their residents, the enterprise, and private wireless is a key component of that. So when we talk about private wireless, what we're doing with AWS, is giving an enterprise the freedom to operate a network um, independent of a mobile network operator. So that means everything from the RAN to the core to the applications that run on this network are sort of within the domain of the enterprise, merging 5G and you know, edge compute, um, and driving new business outcomes. That's really the most important thing. We can talk a lot about 5G here at MWC, but mm -hmm. what, what the enterprise really cares about are new business outcomes. How do they become more efficient? and that's really what private wireless helps enable. So help us connect the dots when we talk about private wireless. Um, we've definitely been in learning mode here, and I'll speak for myself. Uh, going around and looking at some of the exhibits and seeing how things work, and I, and, and I know that I wasn't necessarily 100% clear on this connection between a 5G private wireless network today and where Wi-Fi still comes into play. So, so if, I am, if I am a new resident in this area, right. Uh, happily living near the amazing new presence of AWS <laughs> on the East Coast, uh, and I want to use my mobile device, how am I connected into that private wireless network? What, is that, what does that look like a, as a practical matter? So that example that you just referred to is really something that we enable through neutral host. 
So in fact, what we're able to do through this private network is also create carrier connectivity. Basically create a pipe almost for the carriers to be able to reach a consumer device like that. A lot of private wireless is also driving business outcomes with enterprises. So work that we're doing, like for example, with the, um, uh, with Cal Poly out in California, for example, is to enable a new 5G innovation platform. So this is driving all sorts of new 5G uh, research and innovation with the university, new applications around IoT, and they need the ability to do that indoors, outdoors, in a way that's sort of free from you know, the, uh, the domain of connectivity to a, a mobile network operator. And um, having the freedom and flexibility to do that, um, merging that with edge compute, those are you know, some really important components. We're also doing a lot of work in things like warehouses. Think of a warehouse as being this very complex RF environment. Um, you want to bring robotics, you want to bring better inventory management, and Wi-Fi just isn't an, you know, a, an effective means of providing really reliable indoor coverage. You need more secure networks, you need lower latency and you know, the ability to move more data around. Again, you know, merging new applications with edge compute, and that's where private wireless really shines. So this is where we do the shout out to my daughter, Rachel, Rachel Nicholson, who is uh, currently a junior at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. <laughs> Rachel, get, get plenty of sleep and get your homework done. She better be I, studying. <laughs> I, I held up my mobile device and uh, I should have said, full disclosure, we have spotty cellular service where I live, so I think of this as a Wi-Fi connected device, in fact, so maybe right. I confuse the issue. But at <laughs> Jamie, talk to us a little bit about the architecture from an AWS perspective that is enabling JPG Smith, Cal Poly, is this, we're talking you know, an edge architecture, but give us a little bit more of an understanding of what that actually technically looks like. All right, I would love to pass this one over to Gert. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry, just in terms of... Wanting to understand the AWS architecture, this is an edge-based architecture hosted on what? On AWS Snow, um, applications, is, yes. storage. Yep. Give us a, a picture of what that looks like. Right, so I, I mean, the beauty of this is the simplicity in it. So we're able to bring an AWS Snowwall, Snowcone, Edge Appliance that runs a packet core. We're able to run workloads on that locally, so some applications. But we also obviously have the ability to bring that out to the public cloud. So depending on what the user application is, you know, we look at anything from you know, the AWS Snow family to Outpost and you know, sort of develop templates or solutions depending on what the customer workloads demand. But, you know, the innovation that's happened, especially around the packet core, and how we can make that so compact and able to run on such a capable appliance is really powerful. Yeah, and I will add that, um, you know, I, I think the diversification of the um, different connectivity mo modules that we have, a lot of them have been developed because of the needs from the telco industry. So, you know, the ad adaptation of Outpost to run into the edge. Um, the Snow family. So, you know, the telco industry is really leading a lot of the developments that uh, AWS uh, takes to market in the end um, because of the, the nature of having to have networks that are able to disconnect, uh, you know, ruggedized environments, the latency, right. you know, the, the numerous use cases that our telco customers are facing uh, to take to their end customers. So, you know, like it really allows us to adapt and bring the right network um, at the, uh, to the right place and the right environment. And even for the same customer, they may have different satellite offices or remote sites that need different connectivity needs. Right, so it sounds like that collaboration between AWS and Telco is quite strong and symbiotic, it sounds like. Absolutely. So we talked about a number, a number of the announcements. In our final minutes, I want to talk about integrated private wireless. That was just announced last week. What is that? Who are the users going to be? And I understand T-Mobile is involved there? Yes, yeah. So this is a, a program that we launched uh, based on what we're seeing as kind of a, a convergence of, of the ecosystem of private wireless. Uh, so we wanted to be able to um, create a program which is offering uh, spectrum um, that is regulated as well. And we wanted to offer that on a, you know, in a more of a multi-country multi, uh, environment. So we launched with T-Mobile, Telefonica, KDDI, um, and a number of others you know, as, as, as a start, to start being able to bring the regulated spectrum into the picture. And as well, other ISVs who are going to be bringing unique use cases. Um, so that you know, when, when you look at, well, we've got the connectivity into this environment, the, the mine or the uh, right. port, 
Uh, what are those use cases? You know, so ISVs who are providing uh, maybe you know, tra asset tracking or some of the health and safety and we bring them in as part of the program. And I think an important piece is the actual discoverability of this, because when you think about that, if you're a buyer on the other side, you know, like, where, where do I start? So we created a portal with this uh, group of um, ISVs and uh, partners so that one could come together and kind of build the, you know, what are my needs? And then they start uh, picking through and then the ecosystem would be recommended to them. So it's a, it's a really a way to discover and to also procure a private uh, wireless network much more easily than could be done in the past. That's right. a great and, service. And we're learning a lot from the market and what sure. we're doing together in our partnership is through um, a lot of these sort of ruggedized remote location you know, uh, deployments that we're doing, mines, clearing underbrush in forest, forest areas to prevent forest fires. There's a tremendous number of applications for private wireless where sort of the conventional carrier networks just aren't prioritized to serve um, and you need a, a different level of connectivity. Privacy is you know, a big concern as well, data Absolutely. security, yes. keeping data on premise, which is a, you know, another big application that we're able to drive through you know, these edge edge compute platforms. Awesome, guys, thank you so much for joining us on the program talking about what AWS Federated are doing together and how you're really helping to evolve the telco landscape and make life ultimately easier for all the Nicholsons to connect over yes. Wi-Fi or private 5G. Keep us in touch <laughs> and from two Californians, you had us when you said clear the brush, <laughs> prevent fires. You did. <laughs> Thanks guys, it was a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, our pleasure. For our guests and for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, live from our third day of coverage of MWC 23. Stick around, Dave and I will be right back with our next guest.